This video is brought to you by Patreon supporter Alan. Hello and welcome. You're probably asking, what the hell is on my desk? Well, I have a bunch of different things that we're going to go over in this video, but specifically we're going to go over this little kit right here. What is this kit? Well, I got gifted this by Patreon provider Alan because he had asked me about a week or so ago, hey, see, how do you level your optics? And I'm a traditionalist in some regard, and it works well for me. I use a slide veneer like this. How the hell do I do that? Well, I'm going to show you as this video progresses. But when he heard that, this showed up at my door magically three days later. And what this is, is a scope leveling kit. This is from toughtacticaltools.com. This is clearly from Amazon, link in the description below. But this is a tool that I think a lot of people should own. Now, is it for everybody? No, unfortunately it's not, but it's not a problem with the tool, just some of its limitations. You see, everything in life has limitations. You can't expect a 97 Toyota Corolla to be able to hit 200 miles an hour, unless you're probably shooting it out of a cannon. No, it's just the way it is. As you saw in the box, I'm just talking over myself, comes in a nice little foam kit, easy peasy, and you have three parts inside. You have the base, which as you see has a relief there on the top, a hard edge over here that we're gonna be sliding up against our pick rail in this case, and then you have two triangles. Now this tool is completely dependent on how much space you have between your rail and the bottom of the optic, which we'll show soon. But to give you an idea of how this thing works, it's very simple. You put this on top of your pick rail. In fact, you put it on top of your pick rail like so. Then you take this, put it on top. Actually, it's gotta go like that, there we go. And then you slide it up. You slide it up. So this way it puts pressure, a little bit of pressure, it makes contact at least, with the bottom of the optic and the top of your pick rail to make sure that it's parallel. So once you get the optic parallel with either the rail or the mount, you should be good to go. Anyway, this basically turns most mounts, I'm gonna say most mounts, into a spur mount. Now, I only have this spur because I got it as a package deal for way too good of a price to pass it up, which is the reason why I have it. But these are about 400 bucks. But one of the cool features about spur mounts is you can see in the middle a relief very similar to what we have on this little tool. And it comes with this. Again, ironically, very similar to what we have with this tool. But what happens here is you get the optic in there, you snug up the bottom screws, you allow the optic to rotate slightly, you come up in here, you slide this in, and that's it. Now, you have to keep in mind that this tool needs to be flat against the mount. You see that it could rock on there, so you have to be very careful. But once you have it there, you simply slide it up, and as you can see, the bottom of the optic and the top of the mount are now perfectly parallel. You know this is all even. So when you go to the back of this thing, and it's got that little bubble level, once that bubble level is in the middle, you know that the reticle is perfectly perpendicular with the ground, and you know that your holdovers and your come-ups are going to be tracking perfectly. But what happens if you don't want to spend $400 on a mount? <laughs> I know, I get it. I don't want to spend that much money on a mount. I'd spend that much money on two mounts, but not just on one. But if you don't want to do that, this kit, which is 20 bucks, should theoretically give us the same sort of capacity. Because again, you slide this up and in, and it should do the same job. But if you have a keen eye or you've done this before, you're going to realize this thickness over here, which is about an eighth of an inch. Actually, it's just over an eighth of an inch. This is 163 thousandths. An eighth of an inch is 125 thousandths. You know that this might be a little bit too thick to get into most cases, which I will illustrate to you shortly. Anyway, as far as the overall fit and finish of this tool, it's actually very nice. The anodizing is very smooth, so you don't have to worry about this thing getting caught up on anything. And the action on this is very, very smooth. Is this actually parallel? I would say so. There is no gap in between either of the jaws, top or bottom. I can get it nice and snug and slide it back and forth without any issue. So as far as this being well made, I'm gonna say that it is. Now, before we start looking into how the tool actually works in real life, what else do I have here? I don't have the slide veneer here just to measure that. 
This is actually what I typically default to with, when leveling an optic, and it works very similar. You'll take a pick rail, like so, or a mount, slide this inside, get that flat, and then twist up. I will be showing you how to do this very soon, but just to give you guys an idea, this is one of the main tools that I use for it. However, we still have a minimum thickness requirement, or a, a maximum thickness requirement on this. So in some cases, I use a little scale like this. This is very thin. It is a little flexible, but these are fairly precision ground, so you don't have to worry about these things not being parallel. I use this all the time as well. You just have to be mindful of twisting forces, because as you can see, you can twist this fairly easily. Now, a lot of people out there like using bubble levels. This is not a specific optic leveling bubble level, but it's something that I have on the shelf in case I need it. Now, the problem with this is you have to, you have a lot of different variables. You have to first level the gun perfectly, or you have, you have to put the gun preferably in a vise that will hold the gun perfectly vertical. Get this on either the action or the rail, and then you have to resort to using this either on top of the cap or on some of them slide this under and go underneath like how you see on a lot of these optics the flat spot down here the problem with that is it requires a lot more time and it's just a, a bigger overall ordeal for me this is a couple second process this this is probably a, a, a perhaps maybe a better way but not for me now you might have to resort to something like this if let's say you have a rounded action and and or you don't have a pick rail on it let's say you're running those the really lightweight mounts that bolt straight to your receiver now you put your optic in how do you level it this will either be a way of doing it or you can go even crazier and you level the table level the gun as best you can probably go off the top of the action because that should be fairly flat and then put a plumb bob up down range and then can't your optic until it lines up with a plumb bob if you don't know what a plumb bob is then maybe you shouldn't even be looking into that sort of methodology this is fairly simple anyway let's get the camera down a little bit lower and see how to actually use this thing. So here we are taking a very, very close look at my Razer HD Gen 2 4.5 to 27, set up in a set of low arc rings on a pick rail. Now, as you can see, there isn't a really large gap in between the rail and the body of the optic. And our thick little guy over here, guess what? It does not fit. So that's why I said earlier, this is not for everybody. It's a very useful tool, but it does have its limitations, and its limitations are just its because of its overall thickness. You can't go much thinner than how this currently is, because if it's too thin, you won't have as much meat on this angle, and thus it'll rock. So, as a result, how am I going to do this? Well, am I going to go in there with my slide veneer? No. No, I'm not, because that's too thick. So, I'm going to pull over my little scale. Now... You can find these anywhere. They're fairly inexpensive. You don't have to spend $40, $50 on one of these from like Starrett or Metatoyo. You can get this Amazon. This is just a, an SPI, like 15 bucks or so. Anyway, what you do is you come in here. You keep this completely in line with one of the pick slots. And then you get one edge, rest it on top of a pick slot, and then you twist. And as you twist, you can see we have a little bit of a gap at the bottom. We wiggle, we feel it around, and you can see there's almost no gap. Now, you got to be careful with this because, as you can see, I could twist this and flex this, and it might close a slight gap that is there. Now, yes, for many of you out there, this is probably not a precise enough way of doing this. If you want to go even crazier, I don't actually have the right size for this, but you could use gauge pins. Now, gauge pins come in basically every size in thousandths of an inch in, into tenths, and you can come in here and get the right size to make it fit. Unfortunately, my set only goes up to 60 thousandths, which is just shy of a sixteenth of an inch. You can get sets that have a much larger range, but they're very, very, very expensive. And I don't need that. Or, as you can see, I'm me pulling out this big heavy box behind it. You could use gauge blocks and you could do the exact same sort of mythology. So you could see, methodology, not mythology, methodology. You can see this size, 0 0.1002 is a little bit too thick. Come over here with 0 0.100, still a little too thick. 
but you go down until you find one that fits. Unfortunately, my kit goes down to that small being the smallest without having to stack it up. And again, this is just one of the main problems that you have with mounting an optic really low in the rings. So for 15 or so, 20 bucks, you get yourself a scale like this as opposed to a several hundred dollar set of gauge blocks or gauge pins. You come over here like so, line it up on top of one of the pick slots, and you can see that gap quickly disappears when you get it just right. Now, if this was off, if this is canted to one side, you loosen up the rings, you rotate it until everything just sort of falls into play. And we're gonna look at that right now on the next optic that we have. Alrighty, I have my Gen 1 PST two and a half to 10 by 32 up on here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to rotate this thing around. So this way we have access to the screws because I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. This thing's not perfectly level on purpose lock up the rings and again whenever you're doing something like this you got to do it right so the rings should be fully secured into where they're going to be going in this case this these are already properly set up but you make sure they're both forward and you lock them up and you torque them down to spec now these being vertical rings they work a little bit different from horizontal rings the reason why i like vertical rings is as you'll see in a little bit they make they make leveling an optic very easy because i find in my own personal experience when you start torquing these down bottom to top the optic doesn't rotate i'm trying to use my hands to see but it doesn't rotate as much as with horizontal rings where if you screw one side down then the other then you have to worry about the entire thing canting on you let's see if this is level or not this could be a little tricky with this tool because my hands are big and going to get in the way of the camera i'm gonna try my best to not have that be a problem now just like earlier you have to be careful not to put too much pressure on here let me, you know, let me move this a little bit farther back so you could see we could see that leading edge on top of the pick rail right there like so now you can see there's no gap there but as we go up you can see the tool rocks and now there's a gap that forms on the base you see that so this optic is not level in here I'm going to leave that just like that. I'm going to grab myself a tool and loosen up those rings. All right, you can see the optic is loose in there. And all we're going to do is take this tool, put it back in. And now we're going to just press up and in and rotate the optic until everything lines up. Done. So you can force the tool in there, but the problem with forcing the tool in there, especially on horizontal mount rings, is the optic's gonna get lifted out of the base, and now you have to worry about when you start screwing it down, it could put pressure, unwanted pressure, on the erector housing and the tube. So you actually be taking it and, you know, bending it like that, yeah. So be very careful with this, not to jam this thing in there and then torque down the rings, because this could put pressure on the erector and damage it. All you want to do in this case, I'm going to clock it like that so we could all see it. I'm going to pull this out slightly. You can see that's the gap. I'm going to push it in a little bit more. It's going to lift up the back. And I can, just with my thumb, slide that in like so, and it's good. But I always recommend doing a bit of both because I don't know if you saw that or heard that, but it does feel like it's, it's lifting up the optic when I do that. Actually, yeah, look, look right there. So you come up like this. Let's say, oh, I'm just going to push this in there. Watch this area very carefully. You see how it raises? That's what you got to avoid. So never just put pressure on from the base. Spin the optic by hand until you get that perfect fit. Right now you can't see it, but I'm rotating the rear eyepiece. And this tool is perfectly in line right there. You can see, it just whoop, fits like a glove. We would then lock up the top screws, or snug them up rather, then remove the tool, because there was a little bit of tension that even this put it on it, and it's got vertical rings. I'm gonna lock these up. All right, the screws are locked up, and you always wanna confirm your zero no matter what, because something might have shifted somewhere, and that's the last thing we want to have when we're doing this. Come in here. 
and you know I got to move it over a little bit and as you can see it kept it zero so there this tool works very well as long as you know how you're doing it and as long as you have your your rifle set up in a very rigid position a bipod and rear bag would probably suffice but a vice would always be better now in this case we can go to my slide veneer which all I do is I want to come in here again go off of one of the pick rails use that as my guide edge and then I'm just gonna flip this up gonna move this back because we do have to worry about this thing sliding up and then twist it and you could see there might be a little bit of a gap in there and that's as good as we're gonna get the limitations probably actually on the rail itself or even the bottom of the optic the bottom of the optic might not be 100% flat you can see there it's a little off just a little so the limitation on this is actually just the bottom of the optic in fact the problem with that might be the raised lettering that's underneath it so that's something that you do have to take into consideration as well again not every optic is going to be flat on the bottom some of them have radiuses or in this case this lettering right here well this is laser engraved on the bottom i can just make out a little bit with my finger but anyway that's how you operate like this come in get it in the back or in the front doesn't matter make sure it's flat rotate it up and that's it that i would be happy with you can see if you're off in either direction it will evenly open a gap top and bottom and that's that so what's the verdict on this 20 dollars tool i think it's worth it if especially if you have mounts or optics that are going to sit a little bit higher it really does make the entire process very easy as you saw and if you have really big bases on there you can see this thing will go pretty high how high in fact you know what there might be a question on it this is one inch you could probably squeeze out a little bit more eh, about an inch and a sixteenth is probably where i would say its maximum height gain is but unfortunately you still have to worry about the overall thickness which like i said earlier is about 163 thousandths or something like that or 168 and it's not going to be perfect which is why i said this is a great tool that i think everyone should own so as good as this tool is, I still strongly recommend you have some other tools lying around. In fact, if you reload, you might already have a caliper. It doesn't need to be a slide veneer like this. It doesn't need to be Swiss made. It could be, you know, even the cheap Chinese one, as long as it's rigid, it's square, it's level, I mean level, it's parallel, and it doesn't have any nicks or burrs. Because if you have a slight burr in there, guess what? You're going to go do that, and it's going to give you a false reading. You can get one of these for not that much you can get these for even less and they're just great tools to have around that you can use for very quickly and efficiently leveling an optic alan thank you so much for sending this little tool in and it'll actually get used as long as i have the clearance between the optic and the rail to do it thank you all very much for watching and as always see you again next time and a huge thank you to my patreon providers without you this truly wouldn't be possible if you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can help by using the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.